Hello everybody, this is Josh from Sportitude and it is shoe review time and it's shoe comparison review time and today we're doing the Nimbus 22 versus the Nimbus 21. So quite a lot of change, actually there is heaps of change. Outsole, midsole, upper. So um, without further ado, let's get stuck in. So first things I'd like to talk about in this specific shoe is just identifying what runner should be looking at this shoe first things first. Now, we're talking neutral foot types. So for the classic neutral foot type, we're looking at a foot that sits sort of along the lines of this little guy here. So foot posture wise, higher arch, navicular sits a wee bit higher. So that runner that heel strikes goes through mid stance to toe off majority of the pressure is on the outside of that foot, so we don't tend to see the arches collapse as much. However, not to contradict what I just said, we have had some success fitting a slightly, mildly overprinted foot type inside the Nimbus um, as well, Nimbus 22, that is. Now, reason being is it's a stable neutral shoe. Now, there's still a percentage of runners out there that have a tendency to come through mid-starts, collapse in the arch area, that just do not like having any restrictions through mid stance with a, either it's a dual density block or some form of arch support inside a running shoe. It just doesn't feel natural for them. Enter the stable neutral market. Now we know that that market itself is growing exponentially year in, year out. Um, however, this is Nimbus uh, 22 and this is ASIC's take on a good stable neutral shoe. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna start from the ground and we're gonna go all the way up. So outsole, midsole and up, just like all my shoe reviews. So, with this shoe here, you can see it's a bit dirty. I have put in around about 30 clicks into this shoe and at the moment, I am very satisfied. I did enjoy the Nimbus 21s, uh, but you know, I think it had some flaws and some faults and obviously it was quite kind of um, well publicized over 2019. Uh, people was coming out saying, it's not the same sort of running shoe as what it's previously. It's been a bit stiff, a bit, a bit heavy, a bit clunky. I can sort of see that where people were coming from. And I think ASICs obviously had their ears close to the ground as well because they listened. Because they changed, a lot of the change in this shoe is all about weight reduction, still providing nice dampening underneath the foot, but a little bit more flexibility, which will in essentially pro provide a smoother transition through your gait cycle. So what I'd like to do is I'd just like to identify that this shoe is still classic, uh, classically designed for a heel striker. There's a lot of engineering in the back half of the shoe that will you know, sort of cater for that first point in contact with the ground. If you're a midfoot runner, you can still run in this shoe, which I am and I enjoyed it. However, a lot of the engineering here is certainly favoring that heel striker. Now there's a new shoe that we're gonna review shortly too in the Nimbus family. Yes, the Nimbus family that is designed for more of a midfoot runner. So ASICs have obviously catered for that market too. So we'll do that in two ticks, but let's get stuck in with this shoe. So looking at the outsole in comparison to the Nimbus 21. I don't really need to do much talking. You can at home can see the change with this shoe. Through the forefoot, you can see the extra flex screws through this component through here. So complete horizontal flex screws, which is the first time they did that in the Nimbus 21 as well. So in the Nimbus 21, you've got one, two, and little slits through here to provide a wee bit of flexibility. However, it was a wee bit stiffer through that toe off phase for a lot of runners. So a lot of runners sort of feedback was it just didn't feel as plush and as smooth as what Nimbus has had for them previously. So ASICs had listened. And what we've got going on through here is one, two, three, four, five flex screws. And you can see when you bend that forefoot, it's a lot more flexible on that toe off phase. Coming through to the mid stance component, you still got this little beam through here, this little truss stick device that's gonna provide a little bit of rigidity for that heel striker. So when they come down on heel, go through to mid stance through here, that little truss stick beam is just gonna give this shoe some structure and some integrity when you're going through that mid stance phase of your gait cycle. Then coming down to the heel strike component area through here, you can see they're still running with this horizontal flexibility or flex screws part of me. Now, that in itself will provide a little bit of extra dampening as well. So cutting away into the midsole reduces the weight ever so slightly, but also provides a little bit of extra dampening in line with the gel cushioning at the back. So there's quite a lot of change in the outsole and I think it's really good change. Coming through to the midsole now though, we're talking all things flight foam. So we've got the flight foam technology, which is their patented technology. They've run it now for a few years. It's a nice soft foam. It's also responsive in the areas you need it to be responsive. 
Midsole wise, we're still talking that gel component at the back, of course, and then as you come through to the forefoot, under that first metatarsal, your big toe, there'll be a twist gel set up as well to provide a little bit of dampening as you toe off out of your gait cycle. Now, when we're talking about the midsole here, it's important to note there's been quite a change in the stack height of this year in comparison to what it was last year. So, I'm probably going to be getting a bit of trouble for saying this, but the execution on this shoe was not ideal in the midsole. So they went for more of a jacked up, cushioned version. So again, I said earlier, and I didn't mind it, however, the feedback was it just didn't work for the majority of runners out there. So when I say jacked up version, what I'm talking about here is the actual amount of shoe underneath your foot. So for the men's Nimbus 21, we had 31 millimeters in the heel, 21 millimeters through the forefoot for a heel to toe grading of 10 mil. Nimbus 22, we've dropped it by five. Now that's, that's uh, part of me, six, that's remarkable. So we've got, now we've got 25 millimeters in the heel, 15 millimeters in the forefoot. That's quite a change. And to be honest, I would usually think that I could feel that change in and underneath my foot. I didn't. The Nimbus 22 still felt really cushioned and still felt elevated off the ground. However, the actual amount of shoe underneath your foot is Quite a change, it's five mil uh, six millimeters part of me variance between what it was in the 21 to what it was in the 22. Now, I need to touch on the variance in the ladies suit. Now, I don't have a Nimbus 22 sample here. However, the stack height is different again. So it's 27 in the heel, 14 in the forefoot. So ASIC's true to their um, previous years. They've ever, with their high mileage running shoes, they do change the stack height heel to toe for men's and women. So obviously they've done the research to back that up. And ladies have a slightly higher heel to toe offset. Now let's go to the upper. Probably my favorite but cheapest part of the shoe to make. <laughs> the Nimbus 22's upper is fabulous. It's stronger, it feels a lot more pliable in the foot. So what I mean by that is you can actually conform to the shape of my foot a lot easier than what I found with the Nimbus 21. So shape and structure wise, it hugged me in all the right areas. The heel component was great. It's a nice deep heel counter. So for those of you that have an orthotic or need orthotics and can, are looking at a stable and neutral shoe to put this in, Sock liner comes out, orthotic goes in with great success. It's nice and deep, so it's going to cater for the variety of heel, um, heel lifts in orthotics, and we know there's a lot out there. So this shoe will cater for a lot of orthotic shapes, as long as you do the heel lock lace to get it nice and secure. So heel counter, heel counter part of me is nice and stable, internal structure, really solid, can set up through here, so when your foot hits the ground, it doesn't feel like it's moving around at all, nice and secure, coming through to mid stance. The depth through here was great, so with and without my athletic inside this shoe, I felt like I had enough depth, didn't have to worry about changing from a thicker or thinner or sock, it just felt nice and deep through here, and the overlays just gave me a nice wrap. As you come through to the forefoot though, that's where I found it the most successful. I felt like I had enough toe room to get a little bit of wriggle space, but it felt secure and I didn't feel like my foot was slipping off the platform when I was towing off. I touched on before, the upper is stronger. It is a really, really nice mesh. However, lighter and thinner, so a lot more ventilation. So we're coming to, to some warmer months here in Australia, and, and this shoe, I know, is gonna breathe really, really well. It's a great shoe, great contributor, and it could be a shoe that is your next purchase. So thank you very much, and as always, happy running, and we'll see you out in the road.